ago called Quest for the Best. So I visited the troops in 09 in Iraq, and he knew I went there. And would I be interested in hosting a game show for them at the Fort Sam and Fort Sam Houston? Fort Sam Houston and San So I have a giant base. Huge base. base. And they played this. Now, by the way, do you all have a clicker when you came in? You're all playing this game. This is exactly how it worked when I hosted Steve's game and I walked in there. And all these soldiers were playing. Now, granted, it was 600 people who had forced attendance. You, you had to show up there. You know, I'm like, man, I love this kind of audience. But I saw how everybody played off each other. We narrowed it down to, to we have 20, 25 first questions. Anybody's playing out there. Anybody in this room can walk away with the number one prize, which is massive. Tonight. So we haven't offended anybody. You can be a serial killer. <laughs> you can be you can, you can be, be Bruce Cameron. Skywalker. <laughs> you have a question? Yes. Is the grand prize a copy of Briscoe County Jr.? Is the grand prize a copy of Briscoe County Jr. a twenty three year old show? <laughs>
we don't, the stakes are not really high, but does anyone want to actually place a bet that they're going to go all the way with me personally right here, right now? Money on the stage, 20 bucks on the barrel head? <laughs> or is gambling a sin? <laughs> Who's got 20 bucks? You say, sir, you're going to put up 20 bucks right now that says you're going all the way, not even up here. You're going all the way. I'll see. All the way. Mano e mano. Mano e mano. Okay. Thanks, Mike the Money Man. We'll put this right down here, sir. We're going to square up later because guess what? If you don't even get up here, that money's going to bang. <laughs> and what's your name, sir? Wes. Wes, why did you wager 20 worthless dollars against this game? It was worth $20 just to have that little interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Give the man five more. <laughs> right, let's go. Come right, on, Steve. Let's get through this game. What famous sidekick became Nightwing? Batgirl. Robin. Felix, is it? Help me. Lighter. Oh, whatever. Uh, or Oracle. Steve. Oh, Robin. Why did Norman Rad become the Silver Surfer? To save his home world from Galactus? To be, because he was the Green Lantern to gain ultimate power? Or to win surfing competitions? That's why yeah, I'm going to Steve. Oh, to save his home world. This is a great question, Steve. Where was Sam Axe redeployed after getting too cozy with his commander's wife? South Africa, South America, South Central LA, or South Dade County? So after season three, right? Season three this happened. Yeah, that's right. Somewhere south, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, somewhere south. <laughs> south America. In the film, <clears throat> Set in the fictional town of Weasley, South Carolina, yeah. Yeah. where an extraterrestrial parasite infects a car dealer and wreaks havoc. Dixie alien invasion. <laughs> <laughs> Slither, sales quota alien style, or species. It's a great film. Great, great film. <laughs> Slither is. Yes. Thank you. Deacon Frost. 
Who was the first American test subject for Dr. Erskine's Super Soldier Serum? Hey, skip on Okay, well, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> what is the name of the hotel in the Shining? The Waldorf, the Celestia, the Overlook, or the Bates Hotel? Steve. The Overlook. <laughs> it's funny that the Shining should come up. <laughs> Then it was released overseas in 1982, and it was banned in a number of countries. It was called the Video Nasty in England. <laughs> That's right. And in that fine country, they can ban a film. They can keep you from actually seeing it. Here they can't ban it, but they can, if you can't have a rating for it, they can not advertise it, So, but they can't keep you from showing it. So we thought, that's a little silly, you English folks. So there was a court case. We sued the uh, England, Mother England, the Queen, <laughs> and she fucking ass down here to sit in this chair and <laughs> testify why this is a video nasty. We won the case. The film was released, Evil Dead, in 1983. And everybody in the entire country wanted to see what was this video nasty. Everybody saw the movie. It was the number one video in 1983 in the UK. Down at number seven was The Shining. So you can suck it, Stan. Let's try the next one, Steve. Now we'll go to this one, the one you asked earlier. Who was the first American test subject for Dr. Erskine's Super Soldier Serum? Hank McCoy, Steve Rogers, Matt Murdock or Steve Austin? Uh, what is Steve, Steve? I wanted to be Steve Austin first. What do you got? <laughs> oh, Steve Rogers. The creatures from Alien were based on the designs of what Swiss surrealist painter? Alberto Giacometti, H.R. Geiger, Marcus Reitz, or Arnold Bachman? Steve. B. Oh, H.R. Geiger. During the filming of Jaws, who did Steven Spielberg nickname the mechanical shark after? His driver, Dennis, the star of his first feature, Goldie, his lawyer, Bruce, or the head of Universal, the great Lou Wasser? The late Lou. Jim. Steve. His lawyer, Bruce. Well, he was a shark also. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. 
double down. <laughs>
to Richard Bill University for the making of the first asylum. College of Charleston, the Citadel, Limestone College for Winthrop University. That's some trivia for you right there, Steve. The South Carolina Film Tribune. What do you got? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what, what song did a certain someone perform on the piano whilst playing a well seasoned lounge singer in an Old Spice commercial? I got you, babe. Hungry like the wolf. Sugar, sugar, or we got tonight. Steve. Best question of the night. Hungry like the wolf. <laughs> Find people out here tonight? Really? Right there. Sir, stand up. Can you sing Hungry Like a Wolf Like a Lounge singer? Oh, man, I don't remember the lyrics. You what? I don't remember the lyrics. You don't remember the lyrics? <laughs> can anyone remember the lyrics? Does anyone know the lyrics and can sing it? Here. Bruce Parks, Like a Lounge Singer. Stand up, please. Stand up, please. Stand up, please. I'm <laughs> on Keep talking. Sure. Project. And as you and I talk, they'll find you. I'm sure. 
sure they'll find There we go. Yeah. 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 So that's your microphone. Thank you. That's going to be you. You're going to want to speak into that. What's your name, sir? My name is Jason. Jason, where are you from? I am from Greenville. Greenville. And what the heck do you do here? Uh, I'm an unemployed college student. Unemployed college student. Very polite. We've experienced that these last couple 
very polite. Very polite. <laughs> Normally now, they would want to shout out the answers. But they're not Even though they want us $80. Ooh. They would want to shout out those answers. But because you're so polite, I know that you won't do that. Because just because you lost, why sour grapes?
Jack Bauer himself, Kiefer Sutherland, voices Big Boss in the fifth entry of what popular game series, Jason. Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid, thank you, that's correct. In which of these films did Ken Remy not have a role? Candyman, Evil Dead, Spider-Man 2, or Sky High? Stacy. Sky High. Oh, really? That's correct, you said the board! Yes, you did guess a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoopsie! After his retirement from Starfleet in the Star Trek films, what title does Spock hold? Yeah, Jason. Admiral. That's incorrect. Anybody else on our panel? Screaming out, folks. Panel first. Uh, hands up if anybody thinks they got it. Right here. Oh, that bass is correct. Mr. Bruce Buck, thank you very much. Which Back to the Future movie 1, 2, or 3 finds Marty in the year 2015? Christy. Two. Back to the Future 2. That's correct. Thank you. What is Norman Bates' mother's first name? Yes, Daisy. Norma. Boom! Got it. Thank you. In Detective Comics number 27, published in 1939, introduce what crime fighter, Jason? Batman. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of the first round. Let's take a little stop. <laughs>
Doodles, Jason. That would be uh, Star Wars, you know? Star Wars, a buddy one? A new one. Jason 50, Christy 
75, Stacy 45. Again, a diverse crowd. I'll name a central character. You tell me what graphic novel or series they appear in. King Leonidas. Christy. Correct. Jess Custer. Jason. Preacher. Correct. The man in Guy Fawkes' mask. Christy. Correct. Sir William Gall. This one always stalls. This one just, they're going, huh? And it's one person. Yeah, back here. From hell is correct. Yes. Uh, Bruce Mars. Dr. Manhattan. Yes, Christy. What? Correct. Vladek Spiegelman. Yes. Mouse. Mouse is correct. Detective John Hardigan. Yes. Says he's correct. Rick Grimes. Yes, Stacy. Correct. <laughs> Alan Quatermain and Captain Nemo. Yes, Jason. Lee, extraordinary gentleman. Correct. Ramona Flowers. Yes, sir. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That is correct. All right, that's the end of our speed round. Jason. <laughs> Known 
tie, we're going to go to the shooting category. And one of you won. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's where the fun begins. Okay, here we go. Again, it's yours, yours to lose, no buzzers. James McAvoy plays him as a young man. Patrick Stewart is his present day incarnation. What is the good professor's name? Thomas Xavier. That's correct. The near invincible sentinels and X Men days of future past possess powers drawn from which mutant? Mystique. Mystique is correct, thank you. Mm -hmm. Aside from it being a stylish addition to any superhero costume, why does Magneto? Third and fourth place winners have a prize. I'm going to make it for Borderlands, guys. Borderlands.